Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I certainly hope you're having a fine day. Now, I've tried to make this video three or four different times, and I've had discarded my copies because I got too long-winded. I don't like making long-winded videos. Today is August 24th of 2016. It's a Wednesday, and Governor Steve Bullock, that's spelled B-U-L-L-O-C-K, he's the governor of Montana, is going to be speaking at the Livingston Fairgrounds along with, I think, members of the fishing game. And I wouldn't doubt that, the, you know, the park service will probably be there and everything. And I, I have an idea that the main reason why he's coming to Livingston, Montana, is because of this fish kill, this gigantic fish kill that we've had on the Yellowstone River. Now, as some of you know that follow my YouTube channel or whatever here, I, you know, I'm thinking that the Yellowstone River got poisoned or the fishing game department was playing games with pesticides or something along those lines. But today I was noticed on YouTube there's a bunch of videos floating around about the park. There's a few people putting out videos about the, the Yellowstone the Yellowstone National Park blowing its lid. That super volcano that's there, you know. And I got news for everybody that's listening to this video. You, how am I going to say this? You cannot predict when an earthquake or a volcano is going to happen with any amount of accuracy. You can't. Because the last time that that park blew its lid was like 400 million years ago. Okay, let me back up here for a second. From 1990 to 1995, I worked for the Montana State Bureau of Mines and Geology. I rubbed shoulders with hydrogeologists, geologists. Uh, I even, one of my bosses was even a professor in environmental engineering. Are you catching on here? And my job was directly related to super, Superfund 101 sites. In my case, mine, mine, soil, and mine water contamination. I, you know, uh, you know, water contamination is something I definitely know something about. You're looking at a guy here that spent a lot of time bobbing around in the Berkeley pit over in Butte, Montana, grabbing samples. I, I, in my day, I must have pumped, I don't know, 200,000 gallons of water out of there for various people so that they could play their games and test everything and whatever have you. Okay, my point being is there was a fellow that I rubbed shoulders with that worked up at the barrel by the name of Mike. I, mean, I don't want to drag his last name into this. He's, he's probably retired by now, but he was the only state seismologist that we had. The seismologist is somebody that's an expert in earthquakes. He's the only guy that had the, the big drums, uh, 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 seismographs. I think he had like, I don't know, six, eight of them. And every 24 hours, he had to change the paper on him, you know, and he he was truly an earthquake scientist because he shared data with seismologists that were in Wyoming, Idaho, all over the place. Okay, Mike told me that I don't care how much education you got, I don't care what kind of equipment you got or blah, 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 whatever have you, you cannot predict with any degree of accuracy when a volcano or an earthquake is going to happen. Now, the only thing I'm going to concede to is because of the instability of the Yellowstone ecosystem, the upper waters of the Yellowstone River, you know, the Yellowstone Lake and like that, because of the aquifer instability in that magma chamber, which is only about 70 mi miles from where my rear end setting, yes, all of this stuff could be contributing. We, we, there, there could be unwanted sulfuric acid bubbling up or too much CO2 or whatever have you. But I got news for you, ladies and gentlemen, that park has been unstable for centuries. Actually, millions of years. The last time it blew its lid was like 400 million years ago. They say it's got a cycle of blowing its lid every, I think, 640 million years or something like that. That's what, that's what geologists are figuring. And they figure that that park has blown its lid three different times since the beginning of time. So there you are. If, you, if, if you're watching videos on YouTube or whatever have you, and, and somebody's predicting 
that that park is going to blow its lid tomorrow or the next day or next week at noon or whatever have you, they're full of shit. You, you know, they're just plain and doggone simple. I know, I've I, I seen a great big computer analysis, uh, 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 a visual readout, if you will, of all uh, seismic activity for the last 50 years. Mike had that, and he let me look at it. It was speeded up in time. It was quite a, an amazing display to see. But Mike was animate about the fact, and he, he had a, like I say, he had a PhD or a master's degree in, in this subject uh, of earthquakes and whatnot, Abby, and volcanoes. So, but anyway... I just thought I'd straighten this mess out because the simple fact of the matter is, is if that park blows its lid there, I'm not going to have time enough to even bend over and kiss my ass goodbye or kiss my wife goodbye or anything, you know. But I will concede to the fact that that the aquifer underneath, you know, the Yellowstone River could be getting... You know, like I say, too much sulfuric acid, CO2, upsetting the oxygen level, or, you know, changing the water temperature and stuff like that. But it, as far as that park blowing its lid, you know, like saying tomorrow or some specific time, that's all BS. It could happen, but I doubt it. So there you are. And, and if Governor Steve Bullock t tells the truth tonight in Livingston, It'll surprise the shit out of me. Because the simple fact of the matter is, is I don't trust politicians and I don't trust lawyers. So there you are. They like to lie. Thank you very much for watching the video. Adios.